Welcome to Decentralized News, our weekly coverage of Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, DeFi, and the macro news that affects it. Welcome in. This is Peter DeVries, joined by my co-host, Ozzy. This is not financial advice. Please do your own research. Let's jump right in. We have a big lead story this Monday morning. We're recording Monday morning. Binance and CZ charged with 13 offenses by the SEC and Gary Gensler. Charges include operating unregistered exchanges, broker, dealer, and clearinghouse agencies misrepresenting trading controls and oversight on the Binance U.S. platform, basically encouraging VPN use, and the use of non-U.S. documentation to skirt the laws, and the unregistered offer and sale of securities. This did come after Binance and CD, CZ were pursued by the CFTC earlier this year, March 27th, alleging the platform solicited users in the U.S., and allowed them to trade derivatives despite not being authorized to do so. Big charges coming out Monday morning. SEC loves to drop a bomb on Monday morning. They are supposed to be protecting markets, but they tend to have big influences on them. What are you thinking this morning, Ozzy? This is groundbreaking, but also not groundbreaking at the same time. The reality is, as we just said, the CFTC had pursued Binance on, started pursuing Binance on these charges three months ago, almost. And the offer and sale of unregistered securities are around BNB and BUSD. BUSD had already been charged as an unregistered security when we had the Paxos debacle. So it's not like everything that has happened is totally novel or new. But it is earth shattering because it's the last big exchange to be charged in the US by the SEC and we're really seeing the effects. Coin has hit 257 yeah. and was also was also like still feeling the pain and we were seeing the pain across the market and we'd seen a rally recently. So this is really earth shattering. Well, it was a rally, but like this was the first kind of red month for Bitcoin and it was sitting right around some technical levels like bull market support band kind of stuff. And it really just broke through this morning. That's for sure on the downside. Absolutely. We're looking now and we've even hit 25.5 now. So still feeling the pain on Bitcoin right now. So we were teetering on the edge and a lot of people were talking about 37.5 or 35,000 on Bitcoin, but we've uh, definitely, we've definitely teetered towards the downside with uh, some help from our friends at the SEC. I, I've been leaning towards this really good chance that we get the summer lull volume has been down even before this came down social indicators, social media indicators, less people searching Google search, Bitcoin, that kind of stuff. That was all going on already. So coin dominance going up, all coins going down, all that kind of trending, trending down. But anyway, back to this story. The charge is serious, but not necessarily a surprise. But there were some interesting things inside, like page 85 of the allegations. It's mentioned specifically securities other things that the sec considers securities there was language that said this is not a complete list all that kind of there could be others but cardano solana polygon algorand filecoin cosmos sandbox axie infinity decentraland and coti i'm not familiar with that. they're a layer two on on cardano okay Oh, okay. Okay. But anyway, a lot of big names mentioned as securities. And then also just a few left out. XRP, AVAX, and Ethereum. Not mentioned. Doesn't mean they're out of the woods, but interesting nonetheless. Yeah. XRP has a lawsuit going. Everyone wants to know what's going to happen with Ether. And then AVAX, they're cheering today. The AVAX community. Yeah, that's big news for AVAX just because when essentially all of their major L1 competitors other than right. Ethereum and Bitcoin are named in this lawsuit. It gives them a reason to cheer. It also leads to speculation about that partnership with us and what that maybe is doing to protect AVAX because they're partnered with a American company and therefore have some pretty major backing potentially. We're 
we're really seeing this as this calling them of securities as a major blow to the entire crypto space because these were essentially the leading L1s and Metaverse Web3 gaming plays and tokens of the last bull run and heading into this next bull run. Yeah. And looking for a silver lining is it's as much as this feels just an extension of choke point 2.0 and the U S government really being tough and trying to almost stomp it out. It's hard to imagine them being able to completely put out this fire and they're bringing together competitors, people who normally would be competing against each other for the same market share realized may the silver lining, maybe they realize that they have to get together and put forth a coordinated effort and coordinated front to fight back against what is a very powerful country. Absolutely. You're putting t together almost most of the top 10 and even top 20 coins in cryptocurrency. You're putting together the two largest exchanges worldwide in terms of volume in Coinbase and Binance and right. giving them a reason and a target. You're giving them a very clear target of the U.S. government and the SEC. The SEC keeps making these allegations, and so they don't now have to fight individually. XRP isn't fighting the U.S. alone. Right. Coinbase isn't fighting the U.S. alone. They've got the power of putting all of their funds, all of their resources together to kick the U.S. government and Gary Gensler's butt. In and quite frankly, they're attacking without legislation. So there may be some holes in their argument. Oh, absolutely. If, when we go talk about these responses from Binance and from Charles Hoskinson, the founder of ADA, and we go look at some of the other important news, especially touching base with Coinbase and their case against the SEC right now, we've got a whole bunch of very interesting and important points that are being made by everyone in the cryptocurrency community on a slight side note because it was meme coin season and gensler was a meme coin huh. that is up today gensler, I didn't see that. Yeah. gensler has rallied on news that gensler has huh? pursued the pursuit that just shows the the sense of humor of this whole of our community of the crypto oh, yeah. community i swear that's fun but yeah let's get into binance's kind of official response they waited until they saw the actual allegations in full it seems like the media gets it first there's a big media splash that gets to happen first coordinated by the sec but they had their official response did you see it yeah, I saw their official response, and it, it's funny. That was CZ's comment, was that the media has gotten the official complaint before they have. I was looking on Twitter, and there was multiple allegations and posts saying that Binance had been charged, and there wasn't a single newspaper article. There was nothing from Binance yet. And I was like, is this real or is this not? And so right. I didn't originally post it until I found, I found the real, I found certified information but binance's response to the sec makes some serious digs at the sec they allege that they were had been trying to work with the sec to address any sec concerns and reach a negotiated settlement and basically all of these charges before they were charged and for several months now so it mirrors what coinbase was saying the SEC doesn't want to work with them. Yeah, that is what Coinbase said. It, it seems like Brian said there may have been mistakes made, but we're willing to change, even pay for our issues we've had in the past. But there's just no one to work with on that and get through that, it seems like. Yeah, Binance in their official response said, unfortunately, the SEC's refusal to productively engage with us is just another example of the commission's misguided and conscious refusal to provide much needed clarity and guidance to the digital asset industry. Mm. Essentially a perfect echo of what Coinbase 
has been saying in their court case against the SEC regarding the mandamus and around the petition that they put out last July, almost a year ago now. So it's now not just Coinbase saying this. You've got Binance saying this, and I'm sure we're going to be seeing these different cryptocurrencies come out and say the same thing. And so what is Congress going to do about it? Because everybody in this industry is coming out and saying, hey, we're trying to follow the rules. But the SEC and Gary Gensler won't work with us. And their response is, the rules are there. You got to deal with the rules that are there. We're just going to start pressing charges. One of my favorite responses came from Charles Hodgkinson because he's mentioned with Ada in here. But it, it seems like this is just the quote. It seems like the next series and the steps of steps to implement choke point 2.0, which is basically unofficial policy without legislation. The end goal is an agenda based CBDC partner with a handful of massive banks and end to end control over every aspect of your financial life, which is a little scary, but that's what's at stake here. That, that's the allegations. And it's been allegations that the cryptocurrency community have been making since the closures of Signature and Silvergate Bank during the banking crisis, the attack on yeah. Paxos and BUSD and the lawsuit of Coinbase against Coinbase. So it isn't that far of a stretch to be making this comment. Yep. This has been a sentiment that has been present in the industry for a long time. And it makes total sense. You're essentially shutting down the biggest worldwide exchange in the US with this lawsuit. You're essentially, sh and you're shutting down all of the major competitors for a CBDC. You've, you're making it essentially impossible for U.S. citizens to participate in the international financial decentralized system. The only things that they haven't openly attacked are Ethereum and Bitcoin in the it's SEC the and the CFTC haven't attacked it, but gosh, Elizabeth Warren, we're not even really talking too much about her, but she was just like shut it all down, including Bitcoin. There's specifically Bitcoin in her claim that it's why there's a fentanyl crisis practically. It's just there was one little report connecting Bitcoin to fentanyl at, in, in China, and she's going to shut down Bitcoin completely. Yeah. It's the cause of the fentanyl crisis. That and comments coming out of the White House alleging that cryptocurrency theft is linked to North Korea's missile program, that Bitcoin's use in El Salvador is a national security threat, and the forced banning of cryptocurrencies in Argentina and Pakistan in order to receive their IMF bailouts. If this isn't choke point 2.0, I don't know what is. Yeah. And it's, there are bad actors that will use any tool. Can you, you can use any tool in a bad way. It doesn't make the tool bad. You can use many examples. Probably the worst one is guns, but oh, you it's can talk like about cash nine in 10. Um, yeah. Or cash even, yeah. Do, like us dollars likely have traces of cocaine on them and are <laughs> used in illegal activities. Cash is the perfect example of something that isn't nefarious, and we're still all we still all have cash, but gets used for nefarious means, whether it's snorting cocaine or selling, buying and selling cocaine. Yeah. But we're not. But it's the people using it. It's not the tool. It's the person using the tool that makes it bad. And exactly. I just... You can money launder with real estate or anything else. We've had a TikTok blogger that's come out and said he launders money with Bitcoin, which is not helping our case right now. But any, it's just the people that are use the tool. It's not the tool itself. It's the same argument that's being made with Tornado Cash and everything else. So it's absolutely mind blowing to see what's going on with Choke Point 2.0 in the U.S. right now. Yeah, I think the real threat to them is the decentralization aspect, not these specific examples they're using. Absolutely the, not. The, but but uh, let's let's dive also... into the good side of the coin because Republicans in the U.S. 
are trying to change the narrative. They're trying to cooperate with industry. And this is something that is, honestly was going to be our lead story today if we didn't have what happened this morning happen. Because this story is absolutely groundbreaking for the crypto industry in the U.S. if it's allowed to keep moving forward. Yeah. Republican lawmakers have proposed a functional framework aimed at providing regulatory clarity for Bitcoin and crypto companies in the country in the House. It's currently being proposed at both the Financial Services Committee and the Agriculture Committee. Why agriculture controls the CFTC and commodities. And so that's right. why it's being presented. Between... A lot of agricultural products are commodities. Exactly. And so commodities and the CFTC were originally developed to regulate agriculture and agricultural products. And so there's not an issuer if it comes out of the ground. Exactly. And so <laughs> therefore that's why it's sitting before both financial services and agriculture. It's, yeah. it's crazy. The framework aims to split the responsibility for crypto between the CFTC and the SEC, depending on if the token can be defined as a security or as a commodity. Although it doesn't really provide a new definition for what is a commodity or a security. Even they said they're really just trying to start a discussion so we can create this framework so that we can define that. We need to make those definitions. Yeah. And I think that's what the U.S. needs. Uh, We've seen presidential candidates on both sides of the aisle try and get that conversation going. Yeah, I think that's what's interesting about this bill is that it comes in a year where we're going to have an increased debate. This is going to be a bigger and bigger topic, it looks like, in the the upcoming presidential debates. And with presidential election, you also have congressional elections. You also have Senate elections. So every two years, all of Congress gets reelected. Every six years, or I think it's every six years that like half of the Senate gets reelected. So there's just a lot of, there's a lot going on. You got presidential elections, Senate, Congress, a lot of it, a lot happening. Yeah. And the Republicans did try to start that discussion and provide a potential framework for what might be confined, defined as a commodity or a security in the discussion draft. It doesn't really flesh it out enough. But it gives a starting point and see where regulators' heads are at. They say that any regulated crypto firms handling a token or cryptocurrency can make a case that the the assets are commodities, but they have to explain why in detail and how they work and prove that they are truly decentralized by certifying that nobody is necessarily steering the project. And that's what makes Cardano, Algorand, Polygon... And all of these other projects that have been targeted by the SEC in this most recent lawsuit, potential targets, because we've got Charles Hoskinson with the right. Polygon yeah. Labs. You uh, have CEO type leaders, yeah. You have leaders. And so they, in this sniff test, they wouldn't pass the sniff test. And that nobody controls more than 20% of the assets. You'd have to make sure that... M- the foundation doesn't control more than 20% and no holder controls more than 20%. So it's an interesting, yeah, interesting starting thing. point. It provides some type of definition, some place to start. Yeah, absolutely. But it's it sucks that it's going to get buried. This story is going to get buried because yeah. everyone's going to focus on what's going on with Binance yeah. and this the SEC. And, I and it remains to be seen if there's Democrats that want to get involved with this. This is strictly, so far, Republican side. They're proposing it. They don't want it to just be strictly Republican. They really seems like they just want to start the discussion. But so far, looking for Democrats that want to get on board and start having this discussion as well. Yeah, but it's going to be very hard when you've got the SEC coming out so hard against Binance right as they make this announcement, right as this kind of hits the news headlines. And so no Democrats are going to want to get behind cryptocurrency when you've just got another big actor being sued by the SEC. Uh, This action by the SEC seems 
so targeted and deliberate, not only to just make headlines, which is something that Binance yeah, alleges. That bothers me. Yeah. Uh, the fact that the SEC always comes out with these things Monday morning shines a light on that fact a little bit. It's Binance alleges that it seems based on these developments that the SEC's goal here was never to protect investors. And if that were ever truly the case, the staff would have thoughtfully engaged with Binance on the facts and in efforts to demonstrate the safety and security of the Binance US platform. The SEC's real intent here instead appears to make is appears to be to make headlines. And this has been the SEC's MO all year with yeah. cryptocurrency, whether it's going after Kraken, Gemini, Paxos, any of the issues that we've had with the SEC up until now. And they've done a good job of scaring away retail investors, quite honestly. On, absolutely. And my allegation is that they want to bury this bill and they're setting the stage for a jurisdictional battle between the SEC and the CFTC. Gensler, Gary Gensler, wants to be in charge of all cryptocurrencies. He wants exchanges to be under his jurisdiction. And basically by launching this lawsuit, he is saying that, no, the CFTC lawsuit is out of place because... Binance and everything that they were doing falls under my jurisdiction, under the SEC jurisdiction. And essentially going forward with their legislate by at enforcement, not provide regulatory clarity. It's definitely a story we'll keep following. Yeah, we're, we've got to keep following this because the bill is a response to what's been going on for two months with the efforts of Coinbase, their CEO, Brian Armstrong, and Chief Legal Officer Paul Grewal, who've been trying to fight for the crypto industry through their petitions, through their their campaigns, and their efforts yeah. have really shined the light on the SEC's agenda to legislate through enforcement and not cooperate with stakeholders and develop a regulatory framework and to really yeah. just shut down crypto in the U.S. Yeah, so now we have Coinbase, we got XRP, and now we got Binance, and none of it settled, 100%. None of it. Nothing. We've got no settlement. We've got no clarity. But do you know what we've got for crypto? We've got a massive community of tokens, of projects, of exchanges, and of businesses all ready to stand up for cryptocurrency. And yeah, I don't want to see this go away. I'm not, I want this for, not even for me. I realize this may be a long fight and it may not change my life, but I'm talking about my kids' lives at this point. I think it'll change all of our lives. I think what we've just seen with the WWC announcements from Apple regarding their new virtual AR headsets just show where this space is going and it's changing that's for sure the world is changing and i know i would like to see a more decentralized version of it not a continued centralization of power which it feels like that pendulum has been swinging that way for a very long time absolutely and so we're i hope that what happens today doesn't scare people away from crypto but becomes a rallying cry to fight yeah, for cryptocurrency and to fight for this industry because it's bringing the power back to people and the independence for people to really take over their own finances and control over their own purchasing power. Yeah, I hear, hear to that. I think that might be a good spot to turn the page and get into this. Kind of the next stories we have, I, I know macro is something we talk about every week it's a bit distracting today but we do have kind of some big stuff coming up we got the fed fed meeting next week those are the kind of major macro headwinds that we're facing in the crypto community besides these black swan news events the business cycles take a little longer we got recession fears all that so it's important to keep an eye on that so next week we get a Fed meeting. Right before the Fed meeting we get CPI inflation numbers and late last week we had the unemployment 
which could affect what the Fed will do. It came out last week at 3.7 above the 3.5 expectations. So how are you feeling about things in general? We're seeing unemployment, like it jumped up, but at the same time, we added almost 339,000 new jobs, which was yeah. a more almost double what expectations were. It essentially is double what expectations were. So we're seeing unemployment rates a little bit high, but we added a ton more jobs. So we're essentially seeing a pr- relatively strong. Yeah, well, like, while it went up and it was above expectations, it really wasn't a huge number if it keeps trending this way but 3.7 is still a low unemployment number We're still adding a lot of jobs so it's hard to say that yeah it's some major issue exactly it's not an absolutely major issue it, it anything, make the change their trajectory no if anything the fact that pce which came in last week came in high two weeks ago came in right. hot you've got right. the labor market which still seems tight the fact that we added so many jobs means right. that the labor market's still strong. There's still demand for new for workers, and people are still adding workers to their workforce. I think if CPI comes in hot, we're gonna see expectations. Or just sticky, like that core CPI, which just isn't moving. Exactly. If it remains sticky, then we could see expectations continue to shift towards another rate hike we're not yeah. we're actually seeing the market strongly favor that we see a pause for this meeting Almost. but it's like a pause for this meeting but then they expect a hike at the next meeting to me it's like you're gonna do it just do it but instead of this start stop start stop but i think that the pause is essentially they want to make sure we get another month of data that they, they, right. they want to see okay we raised it Let's yeah. we know that it's, it's like paused. CPI and PC are lagging. And so they want to get, and they want to see if the financial tightening from credit around credit because of what happened at the banks will mm. have an impact. And so their K okay, will pause. 20% of people are still expecting a 25 basis point hike, but that's been dropping throughout today. It's dropped pretty significantly over the last week where it was almost the complete opposite where sick, almost 65% of people were expecting a rate hike this meeting. So it, it has shifted, but we're, we are seeing a favoring of about 64% leaning towards a July hike. So it's still interesting. It's not the soft landing. It's not going to be a soft landing. We're still seeing some pricing especially if we look towards december of rate cuts of at least 25 basis points below current levels so it's hard to see them doing that until they wreck something like unemployment starts to really pump or something like that yeah and then (laughs) anyway go ahead no go (laughs) i was just gonna bring up it's like if one of the reasons they may not want to raise interest rates is because it supports Bitcoin <laughs> because Tether, basically stable coin, which is recovered during this market. A lot of stable coins took a big hit. USDC, obviously BUSD, which we talked about losing their market share, but Tether has recovered its market share and is up to an all-time high, 88 billion. And you follow this train of thought, but so Tether, when they issue a stable coin, they're they take that money and basically buy treasuries. They're earning 1.5 million a quarter. And that's what they reported in the last 1. quarter. 1.5 billion. Uh, Sorry, 1.5, excuse me. Thank you for correcting me. 1.5 billion. And then they also announced that they're going to start, like MicroStrategies, investing into Bitcoin, just physically taking some of that profit and buying Bitcoin. They have very little operating expenses. They don't have to do much. I, I so, think there's about 10 people working at Tether. It's a tiny operation. The, yeah, and the other thing they're starting to do is taking the profits they're making from U.S. Treasuries and these increased interest rates, and they're starting to invest in Bitcoin mining. And there are a couple of stories. And they're going to be doing it in Uruguay. They made an announcement that they'll be launching Bitcoin mining operation in Uruguay. 
Tether says it's going to plan to start a mining arm in the South American nation in collaboration with locally licensed company. And then also just came out today, the stablecoin industry of Tether has backed a startup called Volcano Energy that aims to build a Bitcoin mining farm in El Salvador. So they're trying to raise one billion. They had their first raise for two hundred and fifty million. Tether has officially got involved in it. We don't know if they finished the two hundred and fifty or exactly, you know, how much they put in, but they are investing in the Volcano Energy's first round of funding. Volcano Energy is co led by I don't know how to pronounce it. Miss Jose? I don't think uh, it's Jose. Yeah, Jose Lopez. Jose Lopez, 23-year-old Bitcoin advocate from El Salvador, who serves as CEO of Max Kaiser. I think we all know who that guy is, who serves as chairman and advisor. So it's just interesting that even though there's so much FUD coming from the U.S. government, in a way, they're supporting Bitcoin with their moves, with some of their moves. Absolutely. The fact, like, Tether is the only U.S. stablecoin that it that was and is offshore, if we don't consider DAI yeah, and BRAX, which are decentralized stablecoins. They're essentially the gaming market share. They're investing into the market. They're helping build the market and essentially finding ways to make more and more money. Whereas USDC... Right. Diversifying it out of the treasuries almost. Yeah. They're basically potentially finding a way to get out of backing the US government, which <laughs> would be nuts because that's what Circle was trying to figure out, trying to figure out their how to back without being backing the US government because of concerns about US debt. Right. Um, yeah. And Circle is too focused on that while also trying to follow U.S. regulations, to be able to make the investments that they need to help make them the powerhouse a stablecoin in the crypto market. And Tether just keeps putting themselves in a better and better position to just dominate yeah. that market. That's the only thing I don't like about it, is they're becoming like too big almost, too big of a target on them. That's and... probably the one biggest fail point in the market now um, yeah like especially it's, now that we've seen what happened huge. with finance right and it's just like you get that big of a target and you have an adversary like the u.s government <laughs> it's a little scary that's for sure oh absolutely scary who knows what will happen but yeah how that plays out in the long run but it does seem crypto bitcoin even all coins are coming up against the final bosses with U.S. government, even the worldwide organizations. You got the world coin coming out and that getting backed and just how this is going to play out. Are we going to end up with a world coin, CBDC, Uber controlled every aspect of your life? Or are we going to get it decentralized? Controlled. Yeah. Or are we going to get Bitcoin, which is freedom to me? Like that's the, that's the two sides of the coin in my eyes. So I'll be fighting for bitcoin that's why we do this show try to give more decentralized news sources not just what's coming out of the mainstream media yeah with Any that being said we are seeing some fuel additional fuel to the fire for the u.s government a russian bank is has launched their new cross-border payment system ross bank which ross was bank. previously sanctioned by the u.s department of the treasury late last year is now launching a new cross border payment system utilizing crypto assets. They're using yeah, this, this is... to sort of circumvent the sanctions that are being placed. One of the reasons why the U S wants to destroy Bitcoin is so that they can keep their sanctioning power through the swift banking system. The weaponization of the U S dollar. Yes their ability to essentially dictate the actions of any country in the world through the U.S. dollar. And so countries are seeing their ability to get around that, and Russia is definitely taking advantage of it. Yeah, this is preliminary. They're just starting it. I guess it's on a small level, not on an institutional level. But, yeah, this is interesting nonetheless because it involves crypto. It involves Ross Bank, which 
has been sanctions in, in an effort to limit Moscow's ability to fund the Ukraine war. So this is just like the, a step in that direction. And then we've been following Russia a lot and we will continue to. Yeah, we're seeing Bitcoin continue to have mining difficulty increase with ordinals still being massive and BRC20 tokens taking a massive hold on the chain. It's mining difficulties hit record highs and it's yeah so mining difficulty hit a record high and i don't know if everyone understands exactly what mining mining difficulty is but essentially it's a lagging indicator of the hash rate but the bitcoin difficulty algorithm is programmed to keep the entire system stable by maintaining about a 10 minute duration for finding new blocks it takes 10 minutes for one month to get a new block and as more miners come onto the network, that time would go down. It'd be easier and easier unless they change it. So every two weeks, they have a Bitcoin mining difficulty adjustment. And that really has to do with how much hash rate is coming on. So it's kind of, like I said, a lagging indicator that there's more and more hash rate coming on. And this has been continuing to go up. And we now have an all-time high. Yeah, it suggests that the profitability of mining and people being interested in mining is growing with the growing hash rate. At least that's what this would suggest. Yeah. And Talking. it's interesting, like right. in terms of mining, it's a just a highly competitive market. And this is part of what makes it so competitive. Not only do you need more miners, but you need the best technology in those miners in order to remain competitive because the difficulty can keep going up. And the algorithm that you use for your mining is also super key. With all of that going on, we're seeing, sticking with Bitcoin, we're seeing BRC30. Yeah, this is interesting. I barely have my head around BRC20 tokens, and then I saw this. But go ahead. Yeah, okay. X has proposed BRC30 token standard to enable Bitcoin and BRC20 token staking. It'll basically allow wallet users to be able to stake their BRC20 tokens and Bitcoin to earn passive income on their digital assets. This sounds like a unregistered security lawsuit waiting <laughs> to happen. Yeah. yeah. And the goal is for the protocol to be open source and available for anyone to, to develop on and basically reward BRC20 and Bitcoin holders for staking with BRC30. It, yes, you're going to... You could stake your BRC20, which is a fairly new thing and ex experimental in and of itself, um, kind of not officially part of Bitcoin. I don't know, just like this offshoot. And now with those BRC20, you can stake them and earn this new BRC30 token. It's wild to me. It sounds like a Ponzi scheme a little bit. It, it sounds absolutely crazy. It sounds like something that you would come out of DeFi, but it's being proposed by OKX, who is a pretty big leader especially in the asian markets hong kong yeah it's not available in the u.s researching this i went to their website and was just like okay i tried to interact in order to learn about it but yeah it's not available in the u.s no but it's big in asia hong kong users this is the main exchange that they've got access to very interesting to see what's going to happen yeah uh, it continues to evolve just continues to evolve yeah no doubt Especially, yeah, we're seeing Bitcoin chain really try to find its use case outside of mining and holding. So this is pretty right. interesting. But talking about wallets and yeah. negative things happening in the crypto space, we got the atomic wallet hack. This happened just around the weekend with over $35 million worth of Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, and other tokens being stolen. Yeah, this is interesting because this is a you have your keys, you have your crypto type of wallet. So this this is a non-custodial wallet, but still it got hacked. Yeah, this is like your MetaMask or your your trust wallet or any of those. Your Rabi wallet. And the argument the argument that's being presented is just that this was not open source code. While they were arguing, oh, we should keep it closed source because they have their arguments for keeping it closed source. Why Atomic Wallet wants to keep it closed source so that no one can copy it. They, people can make a fake Atomic Wallet, these kind of arguments. But if it's not open source, it's hard to know if it's safe, if it's safe. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, it's, 
people have created fake MetaMasks, and that's not really a fully open source technology. You can make fakes of anything. You don't really need to have the wallet source code to do that. It does say yeah. that it only impacted less than 1% of their monthly active sure. users. Sure, but, sure, but, it, but to me, the important part is like, if, as I become more involved in this community and with Bitcoin particularly, like I, I become more, if I want to remain decentralized, I need to become more involved with securing my own coins. And if my coins are in a closed source wallet, like Ledger or something like that, I may want to reconsider what I'm doing to protect myself. What you should really consider is running your own, if, especially for Bitcoin, running your own Bitcoin node. We're going to talk about that on Not Crypto Bros. We've got an expert who's going to help us set one up, and it's the best way, apparently, if you're a maxi to secure your own wallet. Yeah, I've heard that about nodes. I've heard there's ways to do like multi sig with your Bitcoin wallet, and then also using yeah open source like those type of ideas in order to pr improve your security situation. Absolutely. With that being said, we got a few more stories to Yeah, more fun. More fun news. We can chipper this up a little bit. <laughs> exactly. Pancake Swamp. <laughs> Been has... so serious. Why so serious? Yeah. Pancake Swamp has launched a tower defense game which offers cake their cake token as a reward. So the game called Pancake Pancake Protectors is a immersive tower defense game which has been launched by the decks. This is a pretty standard tower defense game. Nothing like absolutely groundbreaking, but it's a big move. If you can earn crypto. <laughs> yeah, you can. It's a way to earn, play to earn. It's apparently play. Well, I'm saying it's not play to earn. It's player versus player. They went out of their way to say it's not play to earn. I did log into it a little bit. There's some kind of two week period and a leaderboard and who wins money. Not 100% sure how it works. I haven't totally got involved in it. But they did go out of their way to say it's not play to earn to avoid the use of the inflationary models. So that's good. And it, yeah. it's helping. That's always my big concern with play to earn games is inflationary models, especially as Pancake Swap has made announcements in the last six weeks that they wanted to go deflationary. This, was, this is pretty major. But it's also a cool... Yeah, it's super cool. It's super cool. I think it's really neat. They, but they are calling it an experiment, and they're going to be watching it closely to see how the community reacts to it. But if you're an active part of Pancake Swap, if you have bunnies, if you have some of their NFTs, basically, bunnies and squads gain enhanced heroic powers, granting you a competitive advantage. If anyone is involved with that, love to hear some comments on that one. Yeah, the, we'd love to be making some more content about some of these really cool, maybe more niche stories so if you're one of our viewers subscribers or anything let us know because we'd love to talk to you about your experience with it and uh, if you aren't a subscriber please consider subscribing we would love for you to stick around and participate in decentralized news with us we'll hop into our last couple stories we're seeing more and more utility nfts become a thing japanese airlines anna has launched their NFT marketplace. All Nippon Airways, ANA, yeah, <laughs> has, has launched their NFT marketplace featuring aviation photography, digital collectibles, all on the Ethereum blockchain. It's mainly supporting the MetaMask wallet as well as payments with fiat with a credit card. So that's pretty cool. It's also following kind of other announcements from the aerospace industry with Fly Bondi from Argentina and Spanish airline Air Europa, who have partnered with Travelex to issue NFT tickets. So as they look for new ways to integrate to Web3. So big. Yeah, it's a little I different angle. They're, they're using like a future metaverse, getting more involved in a different way as opposed to just the NFT ticket as an asset. But yeah, companies looking for different ways to utilize NFT and this new growing Web3 space, which isn't going anywhere, by the way. U.S. government, SEC, Gary Gensler. Yeah, <laughs> and that's with Nike also making massive announcements. That Yeah, because Polygon was in their list, right? But yeah. Nike, huge American company, 
this NFT story with on the Polygon network. They are working to make their way into EA sports games and access their millions of fans. They're talking about virtual creations. So they're avoiding saying the words NFTs yeah. will be in, in, incorporated into EA sports games in the coming months, though neither Nike nor EA has really revealed which titles will include Nike's virtual goods, but they've got games like FIFA soccer, Madden, NBA live, NHL, the NHL series. So EA hey, huge games. Absolutely yeah. huge games. And this is yeah. after Nike's NFTs with their boxes had essentially sold out last week. So they didn't sell out. So they had 105,000, they sold 97,000, but immediately after they closed it, they came out with this announcement. So it was exciting nonetheless, but they had, they had a rough launch, a lot of herky jerky. It's, they couldn't get it started on time. It didn't sell out, but they still sold 97,000 of the 105,000. And right after they announced this kind of partnership with EA, it's vague, but still exciting nonetheless. Yeah. I think tons of exciting news, despite our very unfortunate headline story today. Yeah. We got to finish it positive, but uh, yeah, it was a good show. Thank you, Ozzy. And thanks everybody for listening to Decentralized News. Please subscribe consider liking and subscribing we post to youtube first so catch our videos as soon as they drop by subscribing our goal is to provide unfiltered content that will help foster genuine discussion discussions to help this entire space grow please remember this is not financial advice we are not financial advisors this show is presented for educational and entertainment purposes please do your own research before making any investment decisions thanks for your support and stay tuned for the next episode